Now, the Byzantines will also have illuminated manuscripts, much as we've seen from late antiquity. And these are also generally biblical texts. In fact, the one we're looking at is from the Rabala Gospels. Uh, again, a collection of just the Gospels. This is not a fully illuminated Bible because that would be an immense piece of work. And what we're seeing here is an elaborate full-page illustration, probably one that occurs within the Gospel itself. And what we're seeing is basically the assumption, or sorry, the uh, ascension of Jesus. The ascension is when Jesus rises into heaven after spending 40 days on earth after rising from the dead. The assumption is when the Virgin Mary is taken up into heaven. And what we have is a well-developed setting. We have a great deal of quality and really fairly uh, impressive for the period technique. But we still have connections to the early Christian past. Jesus, for example, is again wearing an imperial robe underneath the white toga that he's wearing over it. And the Holy Virgin, uh, the Virgin Mary, directly underneath him, has her hands up in the form of an errant. Uh, again, that gesture of very early Christian prayer. So let's look into this a little bit deeper. Uh, here we have Christ in the center, rising. Uh, he's holding in his hand a scroll. This scroll is uh, a symbol of the scriptures. Surrounding him, we have a mandorla, uh, or body halo. Around him, we have four angels, two of which are bringing him gifts. Beneath him, this is meant to be a chariot of fire. Uh, the eye is reflecting that this is God's chariot of fire, that God is doing this. We have four images, a lion, a human, an eagle, and an ox. And those are the four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are symbols for the four Gospels. Beneath them a hand, this is the hand of God, uh, although it's a little awkwardly placed. On either side, we have angels, and then we have the apostles uh, flanking them on either side. The apostles, of course, watching this miracle, being unsure of what's going on. And the whole thing is framed in. The idea here is to give you something that's almost meditative at this point. It's not so much illuminating because, or illustrating because we know what the ascension would have looked like. We, we generally have a ballpark, uh, this image of Jesus rising into the heavens. So that's not really necessary. What does become important here, though, is that it gives you something to contemplate. So you could almost use it as a tool for prayer or meditation. One other thing to note is when we look at the moon and the sun, the moon in the upper left, the sun in the upper right, you'll notice they both have faces. Uh, this is a carryover from the times, uh, think ancient Egypt, Greece, etc., when we as humans generally worship the moon and sun as gods. So it's not that the Bible or the Gospels are saying that the moon and sun are gods. It's personifications of them that kind of carry over from those days, just like when you were a small child and you drew the little happy face in the sun and the moon. In this case, they're simply personifying them and basically saying that the sun and moon were there to celebrate the ascension along with the disciples.